Greetings, dear viewers. We're happy to welcome you at another international discussion, which is a continuation of the unprecedented conference Global Crisis, Time for the Truth, which was held on December the 4th, 2021. The conference was put together purely by volunteers from over 180 countries. It was broadcasted to thousands of online platforms, and not just that. Just imagine, the conference was also translated, and again, purely, by a huge team of volunteers into 100 languages. And thanks to that, so many people now can hear this vital information in their own language. Yes, thank you so much, Alexei. And uh, hello, dear viewers, and hello, dear guests. And today we will continue on covering the topics which were raised uh, during the conference, as well uh, sharing our impressions of these significant events. Please let me introduce our distinguished guests for today, who also took part in making the documentary movie about refugees, which was premiered at the conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth on December 4th. And I would like to introduce Yulia Karp, a lawyer from Ukraine. Uh, Tabasum Khalid's uh, a struggling Iraqi refugee, for a former high school uh, teacher from Iraq. Hello. Uh, Mikhail Suhano, an IT specialist from Latvia. And also we have with us Manoj Gurani, social and human rights activist, anti-trafficking specialist from India. Welcome, dear guests. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. And uh, now we would like to ask our technical support to play a fragment from the documentary movie about refugees. Uh, but I highly suggest that everyone takes a look at the full film because uh, it contains shocking and uh, unfortunately truthful information about refugees, migrants and internally displaced people. Thank you. Why is there such inhuman treatment of people? I was thinking about it and decided to figure it out. You will never spend a month without being attacked with a xenophobic, xenophobic attack before they say, as a foreigner, you are stealing their work. I've lost that hope of uh, 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 being in the great society. I, I don't know, I've lost that hope because seeing the way that people are being killed, seeing the way that people are being shot in my eyes. A child can be sold many times. I remember one day I came across the story of a girl who was, um, she was Turkish. She had been sold 17 times, 17 times. And she had been trafficked from one country to another 17 times and she had experienced only rape. I also said uh, in many auctions as a customer at the undercover when I was doing the undercover. There were, we were in, in, sitting for the auctions, nine year old girl, 10 year old girl, as per the demand. So uh, the, the trade called the first time sex. Whenever the auctions will happen, new girls arrive in the trade, so they put the auctions. So who will bid the last demand, the uh, money? That person only will uh, means, uh, use that victim full night for his choice. The business that is made of spare parts, the human spare parts. How many children have been transferred from one place to another and then been uh, operated on for some rich guys in different parts of the world to get a kidney or get something else from their bodies against their will. Black market traffickers, mafia is part of this economy that uh, is uh, ruling the world. So what else I can say that uh, I, I only see that the other possibility is to uh, spend money instead of constructing walls uh, like we are doing in Europe. In our society, human life has no value. How is it possible that instead of help, people encounter violence, aggression, abuse and slavery? 
this is not a migration crisis, but this is a crisis of humaneness. People, uh, uh, by looking at the existing legal frame, will not ever be entitled asking for protection. Because you will ask them which, which country you're coming from, they will say there is no country. I had a country called X, but the country now is underwater, or I had a village and this village is being totally destroyed or disappearing. It turns out that there are still no effective programs for the resettlement of refugees. For so many years the United Nations has been working. For so many years the Refugee Rights Commission has been working. So many humanitarian organizations and NGOs around the world have been working, but there are no working established or adopted programs on how to work with these refugees. There are none. And the Refugee Commission itself admits this. Now refugees are forced to leave their homes. They face condemnation and cruelty. They are left alone with their misfortune because of the consumerist format of society. Tomorrow's climate catastrophes could be upon us as well. Answer yourself honestly. Are you ready to face what refugees face? Are you sure you won't be in their shoes? That you and your loved ones won't have to go through what they're going through. It was really shocking information and thoughts. And I know so many people were crying during the conference, during watching this documentary about refugees. And you know what? The saddest thing about all this is that what was shown is just a small part of all that nightmare happening in the world right now. And saying now, I mean literally now, when we talk at this discussion. The first question is for Yulia. Yulia, at the conference, Global Crisis Time for the Truth, millions of people saw the absurdity of the consumerist format of the society we live in. At the conference, there were facts, figures, and eyewitnesses. Could you please share with us what information was most memorable or possibly shocking and what insights emerged from watching it? Thank you, Alexei. Yes, for sure, the conference, it changes your worldview, it changes everything, because uh, everything that we have right now in our life, it stays kind of like behind the scenes, if I can say that because we do not really understand what is going on. We cannot understand the world that we're living right now, this consumerist format of society. And during the conference, the, a lot of information was voiced by the speakers, the information that was shocking. And it also gave a holistic understanding and of the fact that we're not safe. No matter what we do, we're not safe. And it concerns climate, ecology, and the format of society we live in. Because uh, to be honest, we everything that we do right now in the consumer's format of society is we react to the consequences, but we do not work on the root of the problem. And the main thing that during the conference, the truth was voiced to entire world about the fact about the world where we're living right now and about the things that we need to do in order to become safe and what was the most shocking to me um, it's really hard to say because it, it the conference had so many facts about the climate about the true causes of climate change and also about the fact what is going on with the refugees with people who really need our support and care and protection and the fact that when we hear that there are markets where they sell people because right now the the good is actually a person and and the fact that a person can be sold 17 times, this is incredible cruelty. And this is really, you know, this is unhumane. Um, 
you know, treatment of people. This is the crisis of hum humanity, of humanness, because this is the crisis that is going on right now in our world. And we really need to understand that this is shocking and it still uh, is in my mind, you know, as, as Manoj said, that because uh, right now, uh, there are even more pedophiles in the world and stuff like that. And we really need to change this. And already now, people from more than 180 countries of the world, they raise such topics and they do it. They change the world. They uh, join the you know, the conferences and they stop this negativity starting from themselves. It's true. It's uh, really hard to pick uh, any part of the conference. I totally understand you because the information is just uh, really eye-opening and mind-blowing. And uh, all the information was uh, just uh, shown in, uh, you know, very nice manner. So it's understandable for everyone who watches the whole conference. Uh, every person who watches the whole conference gets the bigger picture of what's actually happening with our world. And uh, also uh, today we are going to also talk about this documentary movie, as we were mentioning in the beginning, about refugees, because actually all of the um, uh, our guests today participated in this in making in this movie. And um, maybe my uh, first question to Mikhail, uh, Mikhail, what actually Im impressed you the most uh, when you were taking part in making this movie? You can also, of course, comment on the conference, but uh, I would also like to hear your opinion about uh, making the movie. No, da, uh, film, yes. The documentary, I mean, working on such a documentary, on that such film is hard. Because for quite a long time, and for quite, we, we have made a lot of different videos on different variety of topics here in Latvia. And this one is probably, well, it's actually the most difficult one, the, most, the hardest one. Um, during all those two years that we have uh, been taking part in the movement and in this project, in the Creative Society project, so this documentary turned out to be a very difficult one and we uh, it took us quite a big time to do this because we had to, um, you know, go through a huge amount of information and there are huge there were huge amounts of interviews and when i was invited to take part in this documentary it was one month before uh, each before the conference by that time already there were collected a huge amount of information and still it was coming and coming and even uh, just in the you know in a couple of weeks before the conference we had even more reviews uh, even more feedback and even more interviews and we had to digest it somehow you know to collect it to catalog and to mention in the scenario too so this kind of work of a huge amount of uh, people when you know you take part in these uh, joint calls during the night and you understand how important and serious all this is what we what we all do together and what i remembered for example most of this and uh, it may be uh, it wasn't included in the script itself, uh, since I'm a citizen of Europe, then the story about a person who has a French citizenship and who happened to be in trouble uh, on the Bulgarian border, where he actually was in the refugee camp, this is a real story of you know our days it was just recently in september this year and after this story you just realize that a refugee you know everyone can be a refugee uh, no statuses no living conditions no you know nothing like this i mean 
and if I if we go back to the conference itself, a global conference, global crisis time for the truth, and uh, when you see all those, you know, uh, testimonies of scientists where when they in simple words explain what happens with the climate you just get to realize that it can affect me even though i am living in such a quiet you know region as latvia there are no no strong disasters happening here here but you just realize that it may happen it can happen because i've seen this we had we have seen even those small sinkholes, car sinkholes in the ground, and our government believes uh, these are just some old pipes and, you know, that needs to be changed. Well, changing the pipe is good, but if we do not look at the root of the problem when we don't want to analyze the information, then we are engaging in something that is, you know, not exactly needed. So, such is my answer. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you. And so many, many thanks to the big team of volunteers who prepared the documentary. Thanks a lot. Um, so my question for you. Uh, we know that you watched the conference and it would be good if you share with us impressions uh, of the conference and what moved you the most. Uh, also, you took part uh, in the documentary. You were interviewed and that's why we wonder uh, how important uh, you believe is uh, it is to voice uh, stories like your one. My story is uh, first of all, I I'm very glad to share you the strand table. About the documentary, it's not my story. It's uh, thousands of stories. You know, when the documentary uh, when I uh, saw it. Uh, believe me, I forget my story because because of the, the uh, views that I've seen in that documentary. At the same time, it reminded me at any seconds that I I experienced through the four days of my journey to reach the Turkish borders. Uh, when every checkpoint, when when we passed through every phase, every desert that we get through, every kilometer uh, we we uh, walked, uh, every night that we don't know what will happen in the second in the uh, morning, uh, we don't know if we get cached or we get bombed or uh, that. It was every second I saw it during the, this documentary. It was a huge uh, effort from the volunteers. Believe me, it, uh, it needs uh, urgent solution. When, uh, when uh, refugee crisis, migrant, migration crisis in 2015, when it happened, uh, the whole world should start at that time to find an urgent solution for it. But unfortunately, till now, we see nothing. We just, sorry, Annie, unfortunately, we see uh, uh, promises, we talks, meetings, but nothing happened. We need all of us to cooperate and to, re to reach an urgent uh, solution. Thank you for this documentary. It shows a big, the bigger problem that refugees face and faced before, before and until they are facing now. Thank you, thank you so much, Sebastian. And uh, also, my next question uh, goes to Manoj. You also participated. You were interviewed uh, for for this documentary movie about refugees, and we also saw you. Uh, a little bit uh, uh, a while ago uh, in the movie. So can you please also share like, you know, your most memorable moments, for instance, from this movie or from the conference itself? I think uh, it is good uh, platform that uh, you have uh, Creative Society created because many people are uh, this, uh, getting to know actual what is happening in the world. 
you know before the 90s uh, the people were not aware about the ongoing things after the 90s this uh, suddenly i can say that you know uh, that uh, very important role of media is communication according to my indian country indian constituents the media is the fourth pillar of our nations so i can cover the medias every that uh, are uh, means uh, coming through the visual and that uh, you can say that like the news film videos film also a message is movie have a message so i really thank you to everyone who ever participate in this event and it is continuing and many people are joining so it is very important role of the media so i am very glad to also be part of this movement and the very concern so many people uh, that share about uh, their experience their knowledge and the whole going things someone that uh, mention about uh, this uh, many humanitarian and ngos are working in this sector refugees so you know that uh, whenever this uh, criminal networks especially this human trafficking network human smugglers what they target they target the soft targets that they feel low risk that's why i call the sex trafficking is very profitable business out this human trafficking parts and you know everyone that human trafficking is uh, taking largest profitable profitable business in the world so i was also that uh, you know every year i read as uh, i am working from 17 years in this field so i have uh, met with many incidents even though i i saw the uh, the the market where the children especially the sex trafficking victims selling out openly i am telling about the cox bazaar if you googleize everything we will get the, in google now what is this uh, current uh, index report also came of uh, you know un uh, scr that united nation high commission high commission for refugees report and they are mentioning that around 83 million people are the refugees so what do you think the government is not aware about it even government have their own intelligence agencies they know each and everything what things are going in this country they collect every day data now the this electronic when the electronic devices came media came now people are becoming very professional so at the place we don't have to be move now we have to be sit and click and just watch and whatever you can act like these things happening so i call that refugees no this uh, the someone also mentioned this everyone are the refugees you know i think the mikhail only explained everyone are the refugees okay we have the freedoms we are living our life but we have to find the causes and unite the people see no one can fight alone and uh, solve this problem people have to unite and uh, act and the sort out the problems we have to save human life we have to save this planet because uh, you know everyone are uh, means uh, in the race we will be the number one we will the number one or what we are losing our uh, you know our uh, rights 
we are losing so we just focusing on power so many concerns are there people have to come forward and unite and you know i am not the scholar i am not uh, very that uh, educated person but whatever i am sharing i am sharing my life experience because from 17 years i am working in this field and now i have identified a new trend you know the this mafia always uh, uh, that uh, believe just on profit no humanity nothing they have when times comes the, this mafia also will not think about to anything they will sell their own families when the crisis come they will go forward for the uh, their own family members now what is trend you know uh, that in uh, my country especially in uh, the metro cities and developing metro cities so there is a bigger mafia horizon so what they do if adult beggars begs so people don't take attention when the same adult uh, person especially women see takes a infant and begs then people get emotional oh she is the means uh, mother of infant and begging for her child and for her but people don't know the child had been kidnapped and child had been uh, uh, bought on rent you can google also just around uh, maybe 10 year before so in bangalore in india just a uh, couple got to know that uh, they were the it professional family both the couples and what they do they Uh, they have one uh, uh, baby boy small infant so they had a nanny for her uh, taking for his taking care then they both used to go to uh, their uh, uh, offices they have fixed offices hour and so when they come back so mother after suddenly realize her uh, child is um, becoming very dull no activities how he was that uh, earlier doing so she has doubt but she realize oh maybe he is lazy he is feeling sleepy so one day what happened after many months one day suddenly they uh, official hour what they have the official hour it was not that they suddenly came to home around lunch when they didn't find their uh, child nani were sitting and watching tv and they asked where is the uh, baby so she said oh i given to my friend she taken uh, to uh, for the outreach so they immediately that uh, mother got uh, very that uh, suspicious they see immediately called the police and police came and police interrogated and then during the interrogation they found the child has been rented to beggars and the nanny were getting 300 rupees indian rupees per day you can say 300 uh, around uh, this uh, uh, 3 pounds and the 4.5 dollars so you know whenever the child you find with that a uh, woman beggar adult you never find the child is conscious always you will find uh, the uh, the baby boy and baby girl always you will find sleepy you can check the hours also morning you can go evening you can afternoon any time you know what they do they inject drugs to children so they can't move and they can't cry they can't feel hungry and the adults beggar can beg much money and this all beggars were operated by the criminal mafia but when 
we inform the law informants agencies so they were not uh, you know they they don't have any laws what laws they will book because uh, the new thing came for them so whenever the law and policies implements it is you have to show law makers that these incidents and these crimes are going on we have to prevent it we have to sort out these issues this is not the uh, issue about a country it is issue about the across world so that's all yes Yes, thank you so much, Manoj, and thank you for the story. It is uh, horrible to hear that things like this are still happening in our so-called modern world, and uh, we definitely need to, like, you know, solve this uh, immediately. And uh, also, I would uh, maybe return to Yulia, and uh, because she also participated in making in this documentary movie, and maybe she would also like to share her impressions from. Uh, making this documentary movie about refugees. Yulia, can you? Thank you so much. Um, and this movie, this documentary film is a huge teamwork of a lot of people. And first of all, I would like to pay my gratitude to all of them my respect and you know i take my hat off and all the words that i can say a huge tremendous gratitude to everyone everyone who at least paid a second to this film because this is not just a tremendous work but you know this is this is a tremendous platform that united people uh, United specialists, as well as refugees, as well as local citizens. All these three sides were united and we had an opportunity to communicate with them and to understand uh, their vision of this uh, migrational crisis. And a huge part of the uh, all the materials collected and recorded didn't uh, what um, was not a part of the movie of, of the film because we had a strict timing but what I want to share is the fact that all people who we had a chance to communicate with they said that we need to solve these this issue we need to bring awareness and we need to um, understand that all the decisions that are being done as of now it it's not enough and like for example people share that we applied our documents we um, you know we made everything that we were supposed to do but we still didn't have a status of uh, of a citizen when we don't have um, an opportunity to have everything needed for you know just to have our basic needs covered and when you see this you understand that whatever you do in the consumerist format of society if we don't change the format of society nothing will change because in this format there is a uh, fight for resources and we understand that no one is trying to um, you know move us away from the place where we live, uh, especially like refugees, but we need to support those people because they are not able to live at the place where they live, used to live because it, it's simply um, not, not good for living right now. And there are a lot of mixed feelings about that because uh, first of all, I was shocked when I saw these materials, these facts that are really shocking. You see that the, the, the situation with refugees, everybody is making profit out of it. And you know, this basically the fact that the, the conflicts and everything, all the schemes that they make up, they even worsen the situation. And the second thing is that when you hear the information from people that we don't mind, we would like to help the refugees, we would like to, you know, help more people and we can do this together because this is our common, um, common problem that we need to solve all together. But, and, and, why don't they let other people in, more people in? And almost everybody was talking about the huma humanness. And, you know, 
um, at the background of this terrifying and shocking information. In fact, you also hear the other side where people talk about the unification, where people talk about the support, uh, mutual support, and this was very inspiring for me. And, you know, truly a huge gratitude to all of the participants because this is a huge amount of work. This is the recording, the video shooting, the interviews, watching these interviews, every interview we had to watch and understand what this person wanted to share and before we could structure the script we need to uh, go over all of the materials and we couldn't put all every person all the per participants of the interviews into the movie but still when watching these videos they were so close to us like the our dear relatives and you know when uh, structuring the script we understood that every word has to be uh, waited right and we understood as well that we can create a platform where we can discuss everything for example like why uh, there are still no programs existing uh, you know programs for uh, making the lives of refugees easier and communicating with them and for me it was a big opening like for example if if we're talking about military programs they have everything written down to the bits like food water and stuff like that if it's connected connected to the military things everything is so uh, weighted and everything is so created you know strictly um, bit by bit but i was shocked that they still don't have any program like that for the refugees for helping them in this consumerist format of society so basically we admit the fact that the life of the person is important but we don't put it at the top of everything of our all actions as and we don't treat it as the main value and of course the word words of the people who were not afraid to speak up who because there were uh, uh, there were um, situations when when people were afraid to talk because uh, they are threatened by um, some things and there were some situations when people did agree to do the interview but then they uh, came back to us and said please do not publish this interview because i'm afraid i'm afraid that it will hurt me because people understand that we're not safe in this world and you understand that what is this world that we created ourselves how come we live in such a world where we have this complete violence aggression where not a single person is in safety due to the same reasons as uh, you know make other people such as refugees to run away from their countries and we're still afraid to talk about it and that is why the conference global crisis time for the truth this is a unique unprecedented conference this is a huge tremendous event that helped us to voice the truth openly and honestly talk about the problems that exist in our society uh, and as well as the problems uh, connected with the climate and you know, a lot of information and facts were given about that as well. And, you know, because right now in the world, there is so much information, but we don't hear it. Like we, they don't provide it to us. And as well, they talked about the climate cyclicity and the, the more time we spend on not doing anything about that, the, the, the more time we lose. And of course, the, the topic of um, consumerist format was voiced about the ecology, about the fact that we consume and consume and consume and we destroy our planet Earth. And of course, the, the question, the topic of refugees and the consumerist format uh, was also raised. And I think this was like the first time in the entire history of humanity when people united and voiced the truth so openly, uh, you know, about the refugees, about the local citizens and specialists. And um, I will tell for sure that this is a tremendous work. This is this was such an amazing team that I was a part of, and it was so great to work with all those people together, cooperate with them. There was so many, much information, uh, but everything happened so quickly because 
you you kind of felt some kind of support that um, you cannot see but you can feel it because we understand how much this is important because this is needed not only to the people who suffered already but it, it's needed for everyone for every person on this planet so that not so that we could not uh, did not become refugees as well as help those people and um, basically we we are not protected right now uh, not just the refugees but also the ordinary people too and um, I would like to pay my huge gratitude to every participant of the Creative Society project as well as the people who participated in the film and put all their efforts to implement the Creative Society project and to help other people to find out about it and to inform all the humanity and also huge gratitude to, to the team, to every participant of the team who uh, created the film because the feedback that we heard uh, you know, this one of the first ones, it's incredible because this changes people's lives. And it was, it is a great honor for me to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia, for such inspiring words. Thanks a lot. And thanks a lot again to the whole team of volunteers who prepared the conference and who prepared the documentary. Thanks a lot. And now I have a question for uh, Mikhail. Um, Mikhail, you know that uh, currently uh, people, most people believe that uh, migrants and refugees, they are mainly caused by wars and economic problems. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the film and uh, at the conference, the main focus was at the climate crisis and at the emergence of migration associated with this crisis. Uh, what would you tell from your experience, from those facts which you met preparing to the documentary and to the conference? Uh, such a problem as crime as, as climate refugees does it really exist uh, how if if so then how big is it uh, how would you explain all this to those people who still do not believe uh, into those facts voiced at the conference right thank you for your question indeed when we started this information uh, when when we don't you know study the information but we just look uh, at what the TV presents us uh, it may seem to us that indeed uh, nothing really special happens so with the climate and as for refugees well those very migrants for example and uh, we actually see them in Latvia now they started to appear here uh, they maybe are just economic migrants who are, you know, fleeing in pursuit of good life. But what is good life? And when we began to deal, del delve in this question and uh, to figure out who the migrant is, who are uh, refugees, who are internally displaced persons, and indeed, right now we have such feedback, you know, that um, a lot of people are really fleeing from war at the moment and a lot of people are displaced uh, for the sake you know for the pursuit of a better life uh, my you know someone says that my, uh, my parents uh, or my family had to move to another country to have a normal life and despite the fact that we are in Europe actually so nobody not a person alone from what i got from the uh, from what i understood from the reviews and uh, interviews all the people who are uh, displaced who moved somewhere uh, they never wanted to go out of their family of their country they have their friends there they, uh, they have life there uh, you know their life had their rhythm that you know they used to live they they like but indeed when your home is just bombed you're forced to leave it's hard it's very scary but uh, returning to the question uh, how serious is the climate crisis well wars is something that we do with our hands we are mean people and as for climate it is something that happens 
without our influence. It is that cyclicity, those cyclical processes that are happening now, and they're happening throughout the entire solar system. And we cannot influence on this practically in no way. But if we do not talk about it, if we do not raise such questions, we will just continue to be amazed and surprised that those climatic events that are already happening right now, every day, and there are a number. And thanks to the conference, which we all participated together in, uh, during four months of huge amounts of information that was collected about the climate ch change, climate events, when we see this in, you know, it's shortened, compressed version in forms of videos, uh, you realize how serious everything is with the climate. And another fact that amazed me is uh, about the climate is when a tornado Recently, you know, as you know, a Kentucky state was hit by 30 tornadoes within 24 hours and people were left without literally anything. Their home is completely dis destroyed. And what I've heard, uh, they just made some camps in some park, you know, some, some tents and they moved there and that's it you know, uh, and federal service like begin to deal with it. Uh, there is no money for, uh, you know, for their support, support, only volunteers take part in uh, fundraising and collecting funds to help these people. So not the government was the first to help people, but people themselves. And this is our consumerist format of society. We can stop wars if we realize it, that we actually, it is us who pull the trigger. But as for the fighting the climate, we can do it only together. And as Manoj said, we really need to unite and solve this problem altogether. How we will, will we, you know, uh, resettle from one part of the world to another, because it will uh, in affect everyone. And this problem is critical like the most critical one. And therefore, I'm really thankful to all the participants who actually joined this conference who and organized it, because this information is very important. It's crucial to know to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we really need to unite. We need to share this information as soon as possible, because if now we mostly have uh, difficulties caused by um, wars and we have economic difficulties. Uh, once the climate goes even more crazy, all this will come up together and then there will be a complete mess. Uh, so we still have some time and we need to use this time efficiently. And uh, uh, currently many people, uh, they really don't understand the scope of the problem of refugees, of migrants, and of internally displaced people. Uh, such a term as a climate refugee uh, doesn't even exist. And uh, some people, uh, they believe that the problem is not here. Uh, but Tabassum, uh, you are an eyewitness yeah so you personally experienced this and that was a sad paragraph of your life uh, you described that uh, before uh, from your experience how would you explain to those people that such a problem really exists that it is huge and that too many people suffer and that the urgent solution is required to be found for all that uh, first of all, uh, Yulia uh, said many, uh, many points. I want to explain some of them as, as a refugee. They live refugee day. Look, 
uh, many people, they don't know what's happening with the, with the everyday life for a refugee. How do they live? How, how uh, they make their, especially for their files, how do they process them? Look, uh, before, before a few years, when we, when we started our, uh, our campaign on Twitter as Iraqi refugees, and we are trying to, to deliver our voice to the whole world to, to uh, explain our suffering because of delaying the process of our files as other refugees around the world. Uh, as you know, there are many refugees in Indonesia, Egypt, uh, Lebanon, in Africa. Uh, when we started, uh, we warned, we tweeted for many accounts that belongs to, to the uh, Refugee Commission, to UN, to, to other, to many big organizations. We told them that since that day, we told them that if you don't facilitate these uh, procedures, the migration will continue. Illegal migration, taking people will, will continue, take the illegal roads. They will go to the borders, to the sea. And we are now seeing the, the Iraqi uh, refugees and the Belarus and Poland borders. And how do they die there? We see the British Canal, how the people die there in the Mediterranean Sea, that we see people die there. Every, this because of complicated procedures, because of uh, difficult procedures, they don't uh, take any urgent solution for this. People die because of this. Many people, we, we talked to them, they said, we can't wait all, all these years. Iraqi refugees waited for four to eight years, many files. They are waiting before for uh, ten uh, years. They said we can't wait all these years. We have to reach our families. We have to reach safety. We can't uh, wait more. So they die there. This is the first point. The other point is uh, media uses uh, refugees for sorry for benefits for big organizations. I'm sorry for, unfortunately, for, for, I'm sorry for this, for interest, they use refugees, they exploit refugees uh, for this. Um, look, refugees who are registered in the uh, Refugee Commission are not this huge uh, number. They can make their files and uh, 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 make uh, process them easily, and they can uh, reach resettlement countries easily in the, in the small of time. Uh, it's uh, we. Uh, you promise me it's a uh, truth of time. It's time the truth now. We are talking about the truth, uh, you know. Uh, but media use the internal displacement people. They use the people who are uh, in the neighbor uh, countries, but they are not registered in refugee commission. Uh, when they collect them with the real refugees who are registered in the refugee commission, th the number will become huge. When they said for uh, 84 million refugees, they are not refugees. They are many kinds of refugees who are sitting in the borders, who are in the neighboring uh, countries, who are not registered in the uh, uh, refugee commission. Just only if uh, the number is small, so they use it to to take funds, to uh, just to make ads for uh, that we are helping. We are no people who are. Uh, uh, affected, for example, for climate change, they don't this huge uh, efforts, just they just on you, we know, uh, they need uh, assistance, they need aids in their places, that's it, they can um, uh, manage them in their places, not unlike the refugees who need urgent solution to take them from the host countries to the resettlement countries. This fact, they don't take it as it is on the press. Every press and the, every media, they don't take it as it is. No, they complicated it. They make everything. They mix all these kinds of refugees just to make uh, an advertise for this organization or the other one. You know what? 
I, from this round table, I asked the whole world to cooperate with uh, between among each others, all the organizations to uh, solve this, uh, uh, what can I call it, disaster, okay? Many people, uh, before a few days I saw uh, in Indonesia protesters, they, uh, they saw their mouths because they, they, uh, they are tired from talking and asking for their, uh, for their rights. Just they want to, to reach a settlement countries. They can't feel safe. They can't work. They can't uh, uh, send their, their children to the, to the schools. You know something here in Turkey, uh, before, when the pandemic uh, starts, the health care, they, uh, they were cut from Iraqi refugees. Now Iraqi refugees, they have no health care in, here in Turkey. No one knows why. They are, it's a, it doubled their uh, suffering. Long years of wait, long, long years of suffer, long years of neglect, no processing for their files. And then healthcare from the, the beginning of the pandemic was, uh, uh, were cut from them. Why? They, it's, it's a bigger problem for refugees to, to explain there, but uh, I know every, uh, everything they knew, the big organizations. Unfortunately, I hope uh, this roundtable with the efforts of this great team to uh, deliver the voice of the refugees around the world to the whole world to, to find an urgent solution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nabesson, for this uh, great uh, speech, because, you know, it is your experience. You actually live this through and you can share with people the truth that, you know, the way it is, because like you mentioned, uh, many times in the media, it is uh, shown from only one perspective or from the other perspective yeah. and things are being mixed up together. And, you know, that's why I am so grateful that we have this Creative Society TV where, you know, all the volunteers, all the honest people from around the world can actually, they came together and uh, they are helping to voice the truth. And that's also the reason why we are doing doing these international discussions that, you know, the truth can be voiced and it can go around the world. So I'm very, very grateful to the whole team, to you, dear guests, for sharing this because it is very important for everyone to hear this truth. And now I would like to uh, pass the word to Manoj because uh, when I was actually re-watching the movie, the documentary movie about the refugees, because, you know, there's so much information that there is no way you can digest all the information on one, watching it right one time. You just have to go back to the information and dive deeper. And uh, when I was watching it again today, you were talking about this market in, uh, I believe it was in India, in Bangladesh, where young people and children are being sold, like in the auctions. Yeah. Yes, can you please tell us, uh, you know, your opinion, what can be done to stop this from happening? See, you know that I believe that the power of the team. I will give two examples of it. You see the football teams, how they play their game. But their goal, their aim is to just goal. Anyhow, they have to goal and defeat the team. The same strategy we have to bring here. You know that uh, the just uh, whenever you, uh, also you have to remember whenever the good things happening, then there bad thing will be starts. Crime will it start, starts. That's why I earlier mentioned human trafficking, human traffickers, and human smugglers they choose the soft targets you know many that events uh, this uh, risings about the fundraising campaigns they means uh, explains about the many things that they are doing but what actual the money is invested what they ask 
so i i will not blame the uh, those uh, uh, this fundraising campaigns because it is the part of a crime there are mafia also enter in humanitarian works that's why i said when whenever the good things happen their bad things will be stopped so there are genuine organizations and ngos are doing fantastic jobs and they are they don't have uh, you know the techniques and uh, the knowledge to you know expose their works because they don't have the sources that much sources for example now you see the uh, you know this uh, the power of the medias you can just i can give example facebook when facebook came now what is the facebook facebook i can as per my experience i can give facebook to credit it's it's what uh, you know reunites you to your society many people are connecting okay my friend is living in there so we can connect to the facebook and twitter now twitter is the good platform you can reach out your voice immediately to anyone across the world you just have to be tag that person whom you want to say whom you want to mention so media is the very the i say very very important part and media i includes everything whatever it is coming through the scene and through the devices like we can say we can see the movie uh, in cinemas and we can watch tv at home now mobiles are there many devices are there the people are uh, uh, getting immediately okay what is happening in the world earlier it was not that so i i want to go through on that point what uh, mikhail said that the fundraising issues of about the fund but we have the wisdom god given us the wisdom when we invest our money money in any this uh, you know you can say the markets so before investing what we do we do the inquiry okay i am going to invest my money so i will inquire officially obviously and also i will verify where i am investing it's giving me the good returns so why we are not uh, the same strategy we are bringing this humanitarian works there are lots of good things also happening and so much bad things also happening and the my second i said the i will give the second example of you know voice has so much power first i given about the this uh, you know the importance of the team i given example about the football team how they play and what is their goal what is their aim and second example i will give about the voice voice is i believe 100% i believe voice has so much power and when many voices talking about the one topic i am sure that what has to be aware about because now people people gathering so many voices came you just see many changes happen just of voices it is my second so now this whatever the creative society it is creating you know many voices came to a platform and they explain about their personal experience about the ongoing things and it is reaching reaching to many people then people are getting aware oh my god these things are happening and completing how the i i say this uh, two example about the voice and about the team i also say about the product 
you know you any product you can see you will not find that product made by the single huge assist it is mix up with many things so like that the many talents they have to come forward and they have to first they have to identify the causes and solutions after analyzing now things were happening you know uh, the how the you power you know power how power is misused by the people the same thing what is happening in this sector the refugees many organizations are saying that uh, they are working uh, on refugees crisis but they don't have a strategy they don't want to connect with anyone because you know they have fear if they connect with other their crime is exposing i am not i am not saying about the everyone i am saying there are i said before that there are many good organizations also those are doing very that you know tremendous work i can give an example about an organization uh, it is the us based organization and uh, it called the international justice mission i work there uh, in uh, india office whatever i have uh, you know learn in this sector i give <laughs> all honor to them because they taught me before 2004 i didn't know about these things now i am eager to this uh, every day you know when i see the crimes is happening when i see the the problems are rising so sometime i gets helpless because i am not united with the many so i feel about also that when we united for a cause and we when we talk about the problems so they are uh, the uh, this uh, many voices will have uh, a different different plan because uh, that is the human uh, nature that everyone has uh, different skills so we have to bring you know that's why i given the third example about the product when product prepared by any that uh, producer so it is the mix up of many assist so we have to bring those uh, people who really cause for who really care for the cause and have heart to bring change in the society that's why i am saying now that uh, the uh, one is statement i heard that uh, people uh, were ready to there about their experience but because of threat they taken back their foot so whoever here joined and uh, is speaking and talking i think they care for the cause they really care so and uh, this uh, i just explain about the when we invest and for we need uh, whenever we have the investment plan we always thinks about the big returns so before investing we do the so much inquiries when we satisfy then only we invest so this product we have to be bring in a platform like their investment is there also the talents also is necessary and uh, <clears throat> educated person also is necessary <clears throat> so many minds come together and they start they strategize the problems because across the world is facing i'm not saying about my country my country also is happening many things have been 
even in the most powerful country usa also is facing problems we have to be identify the the people who has the concern for the cause if a person has cause for um, this uh, human trafficking refugees disasters many things i can say the refugees causes are that war civil war human right violation exploitation environment climate change many things are there so we have to divide those people who has care for the cause and unite them with those people and so a uh, union become and they raise their voice and sort out the situation i believe there is uh, uh, see i have many this incident i am talking about how i talk about that cox bazar cox bazar is the is in bangladesh you can just find this it is the big refugee camp across the world just you can i uh, means find out from the google they are human traffic traffickers and smugglers identify the soft targets so that there is the open market about the means human sellings especially this uh, you know women markets girls markets because the uh, the mafias come the criminals uh, uh, gather their uh, means from different countries and they um, participate in the auctions and it is open auction you will find that many this uh, reports also came about it the solution is only that we have to identify the people about i mean sir uh, we have to be sector them we have to be you know put them in a platform that if suppose i am i have very uh, this uh, the concern for uh, human trafficking and refugees so i have to unite with my mindset person manish so thank you so much thank yeah. thank you for the excellent points uh thanks a lot and uh as as you thought uh the voice can be really powerful and uh, we all really need to speak up and we need to join up all our voices and we need to become one voice uh and in this way we will solve um any situation and uh coming back to the organizations and uh, what was uh, taught at the conference and what was taught uh, today uh, by Tabasum and uh, by you organizations and media they uh, in those cases manipulate information and in such a way they play with our lives with real lives and uh, of course uh, in such situation a lot of people they do not even believe that they themselves can be the change in this world when they see this unfair treatment uh, and i would say that too many people they believe that any change is is possible uh so um my question to uh, mikhail is mikhail please uh could you share with all of us and with uh, such people uh, in particular uh, uh, your personal view uh what do you think can we make the real difference we common people and uh if so i'm sure that you believe we can uh then how could you please share with us how we can make this difference da uh, my... yes sure indeed right now we have heard a lot of information about mass media and how uh, mass media ma manipulates society and when we prepared uh, material about about this documentary we had some uh, feedback from experts and specialist experts on mass media how they actually set up local residents 
uh, towards people who were displaced or to migrants or refugees. And it is thanks to the conference, I once again, I come back to it, um, thanks to this joint work, we are actually able to open and reveal this truth. And we have a quite a vivid example of this. We have a group of active participants here in Latvia, where we conduct uh, social uh, surveys on the streets. And we came across two scientists on the street. They refused to give us an interview on the camera because they were quite well-known scientists. But what we have realized after talking to them, indeed, the problem is huge that scientists are, you know, kept silent. They just shut their mouths because all of the information they present is filtered and it doesn't reach people. And so how and what we can do in this situation? Manoj actually really uh, answered in a great way that we need to, uh, you know, unite experts so that they could sound a uh, voice uh, and uh, continue to look for their solution. But we also, as a people, can uh, participate in this union uh, and find these experts and it is exactly on the platform of the creative society we can actually unite all in different special all caring experts so that they would have the opportunity to voice their opinion to voice their decisions uh, solutions of how, about how to get out of this crisis because they are happening right now simultaneously and this is noted by various experts today so this is the solution the goal is exactly to build the creative society on the whole planet and being united absolutely you know in every potential uh, all people can can indeed provide uh, the floor to voice and provide opportunities for experts to unite people and to uh, unite experts you know to solve our urgent problems so this is what i think and yes uh, i think the unification of not just all all scientific potential but all human potential it's right now very very important like all of you were mentioning all the you know different crises the you know the main crisis uh, today is crisis in humanness from what i understand uh because you know like manoj was saying you know everything is about money uh you know people need to people need to unite and then everything will be so simple all the problems we can just solve like this <laughs> because you know we change the format from this uh, consumerist format to creative and uh, all the problems suddenly are going to be solved very easily um so uh, maybe my next question uh, goes to uh, again to Manoj because uh, we heard that you actually joined the translation team to bring information to millions of people, you know, to talk about the truth. And what would you say, what would you wish to these people, you know, how could you encourage them to join this project, Project Creative Society, all these conferences, all, all these international discussions? What would you recommend them? So, I'm really, again, I say this, this how much I praise the creative society it is <coughs> very less for me because uh, you people uh, created a, a, a day i asked about interview you know that uh, who are the leader of your creative society so as a as i am the uh, my profession is the investigator so i just cross so she said no everyone are the leaders in this society so I, I like this word, you know, everyone are the leaders of this society. Because the society is uh, 
and uh, you know came together and they are raising their voice voices and the exa- the uh, the person said that you know when many voices can come together the it's become a voice and it says so much power and together we can this is the main word together we can a person single person how much he can't do the uh, together we can together is i i for me personal experience together everything is possible i believe nothing is impossible in that world in this world Possi- there are the possibilities if we gather for a cause for uh, the concern definitely i believe the changes are there i really thank to everyone who ever participating i thank you that's all thank you thank you for that and uh, definitely that's great that uh, we all are the one and we stay next to each other and for sure together we can thank you thank you for thank you very much for that and the next question goes to uh, tabassum uh tabassum so you watched the conference you were interviewed for the documentary uh, and uh, now you are here and also we know that you joined the international team of uh, translators um, of the conference into arabic language uh, could you please share with us what motivated you to act uh, and uh, could you please uh, share with us the importance in your opinion of sharing the information about the conference with the whole world and about talking openly about all these facts Uh, as creative society as uh, this conference i hope it will it uh, reach to the to every home in, around the world i hope every house has a member in this creative society i hope everyone around the world watch this conference to know at least to take the decision to start with themselves to build their at least their neighborhood to make and start make it make it bigger and bigger to to uh, reach everyone by co- cooperating in one family they have they have to cooperate to make uh, their family bigger and make it ref- Uh, in uh, live in a flourishing situation how about the, our big board so i think we have to start in ourselves and we uh, we uh, ask our friends to share us this responsibility to cooperate and work uh, as one person to face that um, that we have faith, that we are experienced around the world in in climate change in conflicts wars uh, even small things in the in our lives uh, i uh, invite everyone who watch us to tell their friends to watch the conference and to take part in this uh, society to make our uh, efforts bigger and to reach everyone to make uh, our decision uh, to hold this responsibility on our shoulders and reach our goals and make our objectives real i make the truth that we are looking for thank you so much navasan thank you so much for your nice and kind words and uh like you said uh, you know so sorry i i forgot to thank the the, the great team in great society and who are working in the, in uh, in this conference so the great thank you so much we are so glad that you joined us and uh, we are very glad also for everyone who, who joined this project because it's you know so vital and uh, like you said right now we have to take the responsibility uh for you know making the creative society because that's really the you know only 
solution we have, uh, like you know, all of you already mentioned today. And it's obvious, uh, you know, from your experience that it's the consumerist format which is causing all these problems. And the only way out is the change of this format to creative. And uh, now my last question is going to go to Yulia. And uh, also right now, there are already ongoing preparations for the international online forum, the global crisis, we are people, we want to live, which will be held on May 7th, 2022. And uh, Yulia, what do you think? How important is it that specialists, professionals in the field get involved in preparation and also take part, uh, active part in this conference? What would you wish for every person on earth today when we see how the climate is changing globally? Thank you so much for your question. Indeed. Um, on May the 7th, 2022, a global international online forum will take place, Global Crisis, where people will want to leave. And right now it is extremely important for every specialist who is involved in any, any um, uh, spheres of human activity, but we talked about the fact about the, the issues of slavery and violence in the society today. So I would like to invite the specialists who uh, are involved in uh, studying these topics. And as we all know, uh, every violence is can be stopped by speaking up. So once we are raising such topics on the international level, once once we share, once we give a floor to all the participants of this process, we stop the violence. So every specialist is a person who understands what is happening in his sphere of activity, and he sees where is the dead end of this consumerist form of society society because right now we have such a situation on our planet that we not just have a problem but indeed we have a crisis we have mm, a crossroads of different crises crises and the most horrifying one is the claim well the the main one is the climatic crisis but the most horrifying one is the crisis of humanness and that is why every person right now can um, make his um, contribution not just to trying to do something but to resultively stop the violence and to change the format of society from the consumerist one to the creative one because whatever we do in the consumer format of society whatever law we write and as we can see throughout the history, it is not enough because there is not one important point. There is no human in this process, uh, the, the value of the human life. We have different statuses, right? We have the status of refugee, we have a status of internally displaced, uh, but we don't have the status of human. and. The, there are people who um, we, we don't we are not sure well actually uh, whether the person will have food or shelter depends on the status and in the creative society there will be a status of human and all the basic needs of every person will be covered no matter where we will be in which part of the planet we will feel safe, we will be secure because we are united and because we are humans. And I would like to compliment to the climate topic from everything that was voiced during the conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth. This was like the, uh, it's, it struck me like a lightning when Elena Podlachikova, the specialist uh, who studies the, the sun and solar activity um, on the planet, she said that such words that we need to unite right now because the next year it will be late and it talks like really clearly to us and that is why right now the specialists can unite on the platform of the creative society and all people all people can unite because it's the um, the all human project 
because we need to unite and we need to understand and realize these important topics and we need to understand and find solutions and ways out and how we can implement all the information that we know about the creative society and how can we inform fastly each other because without the creative society everything else doesn't really matter it doesn't have any sense doesn't make any sense because right now every one of us can put their efforts and attention into building the creative society and currently it is really important to share the information about the conference to share the information about the creative society because whatever we plan whatever issues we, we try to solve uh, whenever we try to plan our life it doesn't make sense because as Elena Podlachikova said that the next year it may be already late too late that is why right now we have a chance to change this vector of development of the society and if you are a specialist if you are um, a specialist in any sphere of human activity or if you're homeless or jobless it doesn't matter we all are human beings we all have one common grain inside of us and we all truly need the creative society as air because in such a format of society we can solve all the questions all the issues we can overcome all the crises and we can build a world flourishing wor world where the human life will be the highest value thank you so much one more time i would like to pay my gratitude to every person on the planet earth who pays his or her attention to the implementation of the creative society either you're translating or participating or gathering the information or making the interviews or being interviewed it, indeed everything all these things they unite us and this is already a part of the unification process and when when we all participate in it all together when we prepare it together this is already our huge contribution to the fact that we would have tomorrow thank you so much thank you Julian. i totally agree with everything you you told us uh, thank you for such deep understandings and uh, dear friends our today's discussion is slowly coming to an end but we already we are already preparing uh, for the next one because the information that was presented at the conference global crisis time for the truth it is literally life saving and every single person needs to know about that and especially about the way out about the only solution the only solution which is creative society so please everyone join us again tomorrow and together with colleagues, with friends and relatives. For now, I'd like to express our deepest gratitude to all our guests. And thank you so much for sharing with us your thoughts about the conference, about what's going on in our world, and about the way out from this dead-end consumerist format of our society. And of course, about the soonest building of the creative society. Also, dear viewers, we also thank you for being with us. And we would love to hear your feedback as well. You can record or write your understandings, your impressions, your questions, and send them to info at creativesociety.com email. We will share and discuss them in coming broadcasts. Also, if you would like to join a friendly international team, please let us know at the same email info at creativesociety.com. The sooner we join up our forces, the sooner we build a better world for everyone. Thank you so much, Alexei. Yes, and uh, like all of you were saying, you know, right now it is uh, so very easy to become a hero who can actually save the world. Right now, the true hero is not the one we see on television. One man can save the world or the whole train or <laughs> anything like that. It's not happening. Those are not the true heroes. The true heroes are the real people who are, you know, who are stopping being silent, who are coming out and openly and truthfully speaking about what is actually happening. And uh, each of us uh, has a tremendous potential and tremendous strength. But, of course, it cannot be compared with the potential of all mankind. All 8 billion people united by one goal, the desire to live and overcome all these climatic changes and issues. And not just live, but live better, 
live in a creative society. And in order to accomplish this goal, it is worth start acting and start acting synchronously to realize this goal. And uh, also, I would like to say thank you to all those all who participated in the preparation of the conference, who are pre uh, pre preparing these international discussions, because there are a lot of people who are invisible to camera. You actually don't see. There's so many people behind this. There's so much uh, you know, work being done. There are people making translate translations like today, and because of them, we can all of us here understand what is happening. There are people who coordinate the process. There are people who prepare the guests. Uh, there is technical support, uh, they do broadcasting, and without them, these international discussions are not possible. So, you know, this is such a really fulfilling um, to be part of this great team of people, uh, this great team of Creative Society TV and Creative Society Project. And I think by doing this, we already are proving that the Creative Society is possible and it's already happening because we're actually the proof of that. So we invite you to join our friendly international team as well. And also thank you, dear guests. It was really inspirational today. And also I learned a lot from you. And thank you for you know, joining us today and telling us all your great examples and your experiences. Uh, and uh, you know, we hope to see you again and uh, see you at the next international roundtable. Thank you so much for joining us today.